was a master gardener in Lexington County here at the Casey Historical Museum in Casey, South Carolina. If you would like some nice vegetables like this next summer, the time to start planting is now. We're at the beginning, we're at fall, heading into winter, but now's the time to think about your garden spot. We want to make things easy for you so you will enjoy it and can grow this. We have an area here that's taken over by grass and weeds. First, pick out your garden spot. And if it was me, first thing I would do is put down lime and then newspapers at least eight layers thick. Soak them for several hours. And just place them on top of the limed areas. You will have to use your imagination some for the sake of the camera. This newspaper also has non-toxic dye, so don't worry about putting this in your garden area. Once you've got your garden spot covered with the thick layers of wet newspaper, take some straw, shredded leaves, small leaves, and cover the newspaper. Water this area and walk away. Let the, the garden work during the winter. When you come back, the weeds, grass should be dead and the ground more pliable, healthy. And you probably could use tools such as this to lift your soil, work your soil. One thing that really improves the health of the soil is compost. Adding compost to your garden. This is what it will look like. And I will show you how you can make this. Composting is the natural decay of organic material. Bacteria, fungi, and protozoa break down products and it turns into this wonderful product that's great for the garden. Most places will give you pallets, free pallets, and you can connect them with ties or nail them on three sides. Take about six inches of small twigs, sticks, here again you may have to just use your imagination for the um, sake of the camera today, but you would cover this area in the twigs and sticks. What this is going to do is cause your pile to have um, moisture drainage and also some aeration, air circulation. You need to layer car greens and browns, we call them. You need your um, brown items, your carbons, which would be shredded, use pa shredded paper, which probably most of you have, dry leaves, and straw. This is also nice not to use bags and haul this stuff to the street for your city. So you can layer this. Here again, we're talking to fill in this whole, the whole area. We'll add some rounds of carbons. You need about 30 of those to the ratio of one of what we call greens or nitrogens. This would be the clippings from your kitchen. Your vegetable peelings, fruit peelings, food waste, spent flowers. Just keep a little bag in your kitchen each day. You have eggshells, bananas gone bad, salads gone bad. And just layer that on top.
sent flowers, your yard clippings. And just keep layering. Add more of the dry on. There's coffee grounds also, eggshells, and things that have gone bad. Here's a molded cantaloupe. Casey Farmer's Market um, donated some rotted fruit. And you also could get these items maybe from your restaurants or your stores, places you frequent, some of their fruits and vegetables that they're throwing out. You could take them and cut them up because you want smaller pieces that would um, break down faster. So of course just do this in your your kitchen, but um, you're able to use all those. Keep layering and cover it with dry. There will be no odor to a healthy compost pile. Heat will build up. The internal heat actually can get to 140 degrees with the breakdown. always put the dry on top. There, there are certain things you do not want to put in your compost pile. It can make it smell and it can also attract pests. Some of these things are meat, bones, oil, fats, whole eggs, dairy products, pet feces. Pet feces can have diseases and no parasites. No petroleum products, no charcoal, no plants treated with herbicides or pesticides. A couple of things that you can add are your manures, your horse manures, cow manures, and rabbit manures, and mushroom compost. But uh, everything else is fair game, mostly fruits and vegetables, like you said. Here's a salad that once was. But you will not recognize this when it comes out as compost. Make sure that you um, do use more of the, the browns than you do of the greens. Please make sure that you cover up your fruits and vegetables, cover up your greens with the dries, with the browns. And it's really a foolproof method that works well by itself. You can come out about every week and turn it if you want. Just keep air going, keep oxygen and moisture. Not much moisture, but it needs a, a, a little moisture. About like a wrung out sponge. There are lots of resources for you to learn more about making your compost at your library and also your extension. This is a leaflet put out by the Clemson Extension here in South Carolina. This is the perfect size for your compost bin. This is four feet by four feet. If you go any smaller than that, three feet by three feet, it may not build up the heat inside of it for your organic things to decompose. If you get larger than that, five feet by five feet, you may have trouble getting oxygen on the inside of that. The microbes need moisture and oxygen to be effective. So stick to the 4x4, four four. this is perfect size. Fill it up and be amazed. Watch, watch all this turn into a beautiful compost for your garden. And it's so easy to put together with uh, the little pallets. You can use electric ties. Just come to the corners and zip them together and you can have it together just in minutes. This is Sue Miles, Lexington County Master Gardener at Casey, South Carolina, Casey Historical Museum. Happy gardening!